It is a special day. Stand up special Tuesday. Yes. It has been so long since we have done one, man. I damn near forgot what the first one was, but I recap, so we all good. So let's do this. Welcome back to Eddie B TV. I am, of course, Eddie B. Nice to see y'all. And we are back at you again today for another reaction video and uh, back for another edition to Stand Up Special Tuesday, like I just said. And uh, we're going to be continuing on <laughs> with uh, Brad Williams, man, with uh, Daddy Issues, his comedy special. And we're going to get into part two today. Uh, yeah, it's been a while since I got into it, man. It pretty much got uh, cut off pretty much right when I was supposed to do another one this part two here but everything kind of went you know crazy with me but you guys know to deal with that so we're gonna go ahead and uh, continue on um continue on sorry i'm stuttering a little bit so yeah brad williams with uh daddy issues uh the first one if i remember he was talking about um uh dwarves getting drunk and saying things that really don't mean like chest bump and stuff like that <laughs> yeah he's been uh it's been a uh, pretty funny so far man so uh yeah man we're gonna go right ahead and just get on into it so let's go ahead Brad Williams with Daddy Issues, part two of this stand up comedy special. And if you like this reaction, please put on the like button for me one time. Uh, subscribe to the channel, ring that bell, and uh, leave a nice comment for you, boy. Constructive critiques, leave a nice suggestion or request, and uh, throw a couple jabs, jokes, and zingers at me. Friendly dialogue, no drama here, all right? Please and thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, yeah, man. Uh, Continuing on with this one, man. I like the fun size. The first one we got into with him. I know Brad Williams is funny, so there's no question about that. So let's uh, see what um, part two has in store. Let's go ahead and uh, continue on. Brad Williams with Daddy Issues, part two of this comedy special, right here on ADB TV, Stand Up Special Tuesday, back after a long wait. <laughs> let's get back to it, y'all. Oh, yeah. We are definitely back at it. All right, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's get ready to rumble. Okay, we're not going to rumble. We're just watching comedy here. <laughs> Let's get situated with this one, and here we go. But yeah, this is a fun job. I love this job. Uh, only bad part about it, you got to travel a lot. Like, the past three years, I've been on the road like 48 weeks a year. So I get burned out. God, um, I was so burned out that I took this other job just to get away from it for a bit. Uh, I, I, I took a job as a, as a DJ in San Francisco, California on a morning show. Uh, don't cheer. Uh, that lasted six months, then I got fired. Um, <laughs> okay. I will tell you exactly what happened. They might say something different on Google. This is what happened. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I was a morning show DJ on the show. I was the sports guy on the morning show. Mm. Obviously, you look at me, you're like, yeah, there's a dude that got picked first for every team growing up. <laughs> uh, I was a sports guy. While I was up there, the San Francisco Giants won the World Series. Now, I don't like the San Francisco Giants. So I go on air the next day. Yeah, I go on air the next day. Talk a bunch of shit about the San Francisco Giants. Uh, you know, make reference to a couple players that I know have been cheating on their wives. You know, classy stuff. Uh, oh. They don't like that. They, the Giants team calls at the radio station. is like, if that guy's not fired, suspended, or apologizes, we're pulling all our funding from your station. The uh, station panics. They call me to a meeting. They're like, Brad, you know, go on here tomorrow. Say something nice about the Giants. I'm like, nope. Not going to do that. <laughs> and they're like, no. Okay. Okay, okay. They're like, no, you got to do it. Just go on air and say something nice about the Giants. I'm like, that's never going to happen. They're like, what? Because you're from Southern California and you're a Dodger fan? I'm like, I am, but that has nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. I'm a professional. They go, well, why don't you just say anything nice about the Giants? It's like, because I'm a fucking midget. I'm not going to wear a jersey that says Giants on it, asshole. Okay, I got Realize it now. Realize that? <laughs> I didn't even think about that. I'm, so I'm not going to support something that's been trying to kill me my entire life. Oh. <laughs> no one else would do that, ever. A black guy would never wear a jersey that says cops. <laughs> that's a good okay. one. Okay, okay. That's a good one. It's a good one. tester joke. Good tester joke. <laughs> that was a good one. you guys one. laughed. Some of you didn't. That's fine. You don't have to laugh at jokes you don't like, but that's fine. But if you did not laugh at that joke, I could tell you something about yourself. You're white. Oh. Guarantee you. Yes. Because black people love that joke. And black people love racial jokes in general. They're not afraid of them like white people. White people are scared to tell racial jokes. Black people aren't. You've never seen a black guy at his job like, hey guys, I've got a... <laughs> cracker joke to tell you guys right oh. now. No! A 
black guy will wait until he is surrounded by the maximum number of crackers before he tells the joke. He'll call more over. Richard, get over here. You're gonna love this shit. Like, That's real. That's real. Not white people. We hold it in. We hold it in because we know we can get in trouble. So we walk around all day with this voice in our heart, like, don't say shit, don't say shit, don't say shit, don't say shit. Because <laughs> we know we can get busted. We can get fired. You see it all the time. People have to apologize for what they say about racial issues. There's always some celebrity who's got to call a press conference and be like, I'm sorry to the African-American community. I yeah. meant nothing when I ordered the salmon blackened. <laughs> <laughs> you get That's scared stupid. and you hold it in. Why do you hold it in and it affects other parts of life? Even something basic as laughter because white people never want to be caught laughing at the wrong joke. So we laugh like we have ADD. It's just <laughs> And we stop. You ever seen a black guy laugh like that? Fuck no. I love making black guys laugh. You make a black guy laugh, he puts everything he has to do it. Body, soul. Black people burn calories when they laugh. It is awesome. <laughs> you make a black dude laugh, it's like, ah! Yeah. That is the funniest thing I've ever heard in my goddamn life! That's true, it's true. Try it, white people, you'll like it. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, you're gonna fuck it up the first time you do it. Ah. First time you'll be like, golly gee willikers. <laughs> <laughs> that was a humorous anecdote. Oh, man. <laughs> I just don't get why we're not allowed to talk about certain things. It doesn't make any sense to me. Because in my yeah. opinion, when you talk about racial issues, when you joke about it, when you have a discussion, that's how you learn. That's how you gain a greater appreciation. You, you do, that's how you learn and appreciate other cultures. Like right now, I love Asian people. I love Asian people right now. Because two weeks ago, yes, two weeks ago, my Asian buddy called me up and he asked me for help to fix his iPhone. Think about that for a second, okay? Okay, I'm thinking. He asked me. He could have asked his cousin. His cousin built the fucker, all right? <laughs> but he didn't. He asked me, and that made me feel good about myself, made me feel good about the Asian people. And that's not realized, oh my God, this is how we could end racism if every group just asks for help with something they're supposed to be good at. Then we'll all support each other. We'll okay. build each other up, right? Appreciate each other's cultures. Like, how much would you love Indian people if your Indian friend just called you like, oh my God, you need to help me. You need to help me right now. I am telling you one thing, now more than ever, I am in desperate need of customer service. Right now. <laughs> I, do, I, I, I don't know what to do with my computer. I have tried everything to fix my computer. I have turned it off. I have turned it back on. I, <laughs> I don't know what to do. If you can please just help me, I would be ever so grateful. Oh, oh, wait, you are busy? I will hold. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, yes. We all been there. But We've I understand that it's difficult <clears throat> because there's some groups that you're allowed to make fun of and other groups you, you should never make fun of under any circumstance whatsoever. And I know this dichotomy exists because I know I'm one of those groups that's perfectly all right to make fun of. <laughs> I am. I'm not mad about that. I just want equality. Like, most of the time when people make fun of little people, they're not even thinking about it. Like, Hollywood does it all the time. Like, I went out for a commercial audition not too long ago. It was for a Christmas commercial. And in my breakdown, now a breakdown for an actor is details about how they're supposed to prepare for the role. In my breakdown, it said, be sure to bring your own elf costume from home. Seriously? <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> From home! <laughs> what the fuck do you think is in my closet? Exactly. You think you go to my house, open it up, it's just elf, 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 elf. Oh then the springtime, leprechaun, 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 leprechaun. <laughs> in the summer, I'll dress like a gnome if I'm feeling fancy. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> no. I it's wrong. It. It's fucked up and it's wrong. Don't kid yourself, I do own an elf costume, but it, <laughs> You gotta work in this town, but... Oh my God, It's just fool. messed up because they would never do that to other groups, ever. They would never be like, oh, you're Asian, bring your walk. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, you're a black male, bring your illegitimate child. <laughs> they would never do that. <laughs> All right? <laughs> now, I actually like when some people don't laugh at that joke because... It helps me identify you. Yeah. And it helps me identify the people that I hate the most in this oh world. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, I'll tell you who they are. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Here's the people I hate. And I don't mean oh. hate like, oh, I, just, I hate chocolate cake. No, I mean, I hate these people, all right? Yeah. If you are one of these people 
that gets offended on behalf of another group. Yeah. Eat a bag of dicks. Thank you. Yes. Just yes. a bag of dicks. Absolutely. Not the fun size bag. No, the family size bag of dicks. <laughs> Just never stop shoving dicks in your mouth. Why do people do this? Why? Why do uh. people care so much about shit that has nothing to do with them? And the worst part is that they think they're being so good. They think they're being a champion. I hope you know that when you get offended on behalf of another group, what you're doing is infinitely times more racist than whatever pissed you off in the first place. Because what you're doing yeah. is you're turning to that group and you're saying, hey, you're not smart enough to know you're being made fun of right now. Ooh. But don't worry, I know, I know you were made fun of, so, and I'm gonna do something about it. No, 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 don't get up, don't get up, don't get up, don't get up. Don't get up. <laughs> Stay there, I'll handle it. I got this, master race on three. One, two, three. Okay, oh, there we go. Like, shit. <laughs> master race. Why do people do this? Uh, and I know they do this. I had a woman come up to me recently after a show, angry, pissed off. Brad, oh, I was so offended when you said the word midget. I was like, right, because you have other family members who are dwarves. No. You have children that are little people. No. Then why the fuck do you care? <laughs> why do you care? This doesn't affect you. It doesn't change your life. I would understand if every time I said the word midget, that was some sort of call to arms to all the little people out there to rise up and fight our tall oppressors. And then when you guys got home, there were midgets just flying in your windows, doing shoulder rolls, and then drop kicking your puppy. Okay, I would get that. <laughs> Yeah. But literally nothing happens to you. Uh -oh. And who the fuck are you to tell me what I could say about my own people? I hope you realize I've been a midget my entire life. Yes. All 32 years. It's not, it's not like I was six foot four. You know, things were going so well. So I hacked <laughs> off a couple of feet and said, let's give this a shot. That didn't happen. <laughs> Why do people care so much about things that uh -oh. don't affect them? Why would anyone give a shit if weed is legal or not? Listen, if you don't smoke weed, great. <laughs> Don't smoke weed, but don't stop someone else from doing it because them doing that action doesn't affect you whatsoever. Same thing. Same thing with gay marriage. It, it, listen, if you're not gay, who gives a shit if gay marriage is legal or not? If two gay people get married, didn't change your life. Didn't affect you whatsoever. Why do people give a shit about that? And why do people give a shit when I drive in my car and I sing every lyric to Katy Perry's Firework? Why? I love that song. That's a great song. It's an inspirational song. Helps me feel better about myself. Now, I understand that joke is not funny, all right? It's not. But I say it every night, because one of these nights, one of you people in the audience, you are going to know Katy Perry, and you're going to tell her about that joke. She's going to be intrigued by that joke. She's going to want to come see one of my shows. She's going to laugh at my comedy show. She's going to want to meet me afterward. I will meet Katy Perry, and then I will finally get a chance to motorboat damn titties. <laughs> yes. I'm not trying to do this whole social change thing. I just want to get in there. Maybe <laughs> Oh, that's it. Okay. Oh my goodness, that was awesome. Okay. Part two, it's picking up a little bit, man. I like that. Oh, man. Made a lot of interesting points and uh, made us laugh at the same time. I know he made my ass laugh for sure. <laughs> All right, so that was Brad Williams with uh, Daddy Issues, part two of his uh, comedy special there. Well, um, the beginning of that one, I understand that very much, man. I don't understand that one. Um, one, yeah. Probably not the most mature thing I'm gonna say in the minds of some people, yeah, whatever. But um, don't ever ask me to do something that you know good and damn well I'm not gonna do. I don't care what the reason is, man, I swear. Me, I am a die hard Seattle Mariners fan, Seattle Seahawks fan, and even though they're not here anymore, still to this day, I am a die hard Seattle Sonics fan. Super Sonics for longer, I don't care. But you know, it's like, if I talk shit about another team, and uh, you know they're they're you know they were to get mad if I was in his position right there. And they say, hey man, we're gonna cut off. Well, then fire me, motherfucker. I don't care. Fuck these guys. I don't like these guys. I'm gonna say whatever I want about them because that's the whole point of me being not a fan of them. You know what I'm saying? And speaking of the San Francisco Giants, I mean I don't feel one way about them or the other, but oh man, 
Mitch Hanniger, man. I just found out today that my man Mitch Hanniger uh, signed a deal to play with the Giants, man. Well, salutation, uh, not salutation, but so long, <laughs> Mitch Hanniger. Um, he was a big part of the Mariners team for a while. Uh, he put out a really awesome article talking about how we were going to break the drought, you know, and we ended up breaking the drought, getting to the playoffs. But um, good luck to you, Mitch Hanniger. You know, uh, uh, whatever you do, man, I hope you do big things. But if you ever end up playing against us, you know, obviously, you know, <clears throat> we got a plum with your ass. But <laughs> other than that, man, round of applause to you for how you handle business with our Mar with our Mariners, man. And uh, good luck to you with the rest of your career and your life, man. You are uh, definitely going to be uh, looked at as a Mariners uh, legend for years to come. But, um, yeah, man, uh, he, he said he got fired because I'm not going to do it. But I didn't really catch what his reason was until he said it. I didn't even think about it until he said it because I was just, like, kind of oblivious. Maybe it was just like he was a fan of another team. But he came right out of left field and just said because the Giants and he's a midget. And I was like, oh, God, that was a good line. <laughs> Very awesome line. But 48 weeks out of the year, damn, that means you only get a month off, dude? Damn, that's a lot of traveling right there. I mean, I don't know if I could do it or not. Probably not. <laughs> but hey, man, if you can pull that off, man, I know a lot of, I've heard of comedians touring a lot, but Jesus, man, that's a lot of touring. But um, yeah, aside from that, uh, wow, <laughs> this is too crazy. One thing uh, that I, yeah, what he said in there was so true, man. I don't like the offended in general. The offended is practically like another race, and I'm very racist against offended people, man, because you guys are punks, man, like for real. And I really mean that from the bottom of my heart. You guys are punk ass bitches, man. I'm serious. I mean, like offended. You're offended. Who in the hell gives a flying fuck what you're offended by? <laughs> like, who cares? There's things I'm offended by, but I don't tell anybody. Because one, no one will care and they shouldn't. And it's my job to do something about that. You know what I mean? Not anyone else's. So please go to hell with that bullshit. But what he was talking about specifically was someone else getting offended on behalf of someone else. That is dumb as shit. If something happens to somebody else, I'm just going to sit back and watch. Like, what are they going to do? And then whatever happens, happens. You know, it is what it is. But I just, like, man, so many things over the years have tripped me out about, like, getting offended. You know what I mean? Like, I personally, when he said there's certain things you can and cannot talk about people, I'll talk about anybody for any reason, good or bad. Because one, <clears throat> if I mean something bad, it's not necessarily directed towards an entire race of people or a certain type of people. It could be just uh, be directed towards specific people in that group or whatever. I mean, like, to... to to like diminish an entire group of people, race or sexual orientation or whatever, what else? It's just like, it's it's pointless because there's good and bad in everybody, okay? There's good and bad in black people and white people, Mexican people, Asian people. There's good and bad in mixed race people like myself, you know? We're practically our own fucking race for crying out loud. But it's like, man, <clears throat> there's, um, there's good and bad religious people, you know what I mean? And there's good and bad... Uh, parents, there's good and bad men and women, you know, there's this good and bad, you know what I mean? Like pay more attention, you know, to the bad ones, you know, because they could be doing some, you know, sketchy, sneaky shit around the corner and befriend and uh, create memories with the good ones. You know what I mean? It is what it is, but like, I never get offended for somebody else because, you know, first of all, what would be the fucking point of that shit? I mean, they know what's going on just as much as I do or anyone else would know, but you know, I just don't really see the point in that, you know, because being offended is something that I've had a big problem with all my life, man, you know, because I used to have a lot of problems. I used to be offended by just women in general. I mean, I've worked out the kinks a little bit, you know, but it's still like, you know, has its own issues, but I just deal with them internally and then I find ways to duck and dodge the nonsense and then it led to not being offended about so many things, you know. You know, but never actually just come out and say, I'm offended by how, but you think they're going to care? That means they're going to offend your ass even more after that. But, you know, <clears throat> we was talking about gay marriage and all that stuff too. It's like me, if you're going to ask me about it, don't really have a, a thought about it, you know, as far as like something to express, but it's just like, well, maybe I'm lying. I don't know. Here's what I believe. If you're gay, do whatever the hell you want to do. You sh everybody should be able to do what they want to do and suffer the consequences if there is any and be happy if there's happiness around the corner. You know what I mean? Like the fact that some people care so much about something, like he said, has nothing to do with you. It's astronomically weird to me. You know, I I've never understood it. 
for the life of me. And it's like, as far as like being able to talk shit about someone else, man, it's just like, talk, say whatever you want. Here's the thing. We've created uh, a society of where, you know, if you just do the natural human thing is have an opinion or something like that or say something that you might be funny, you maybe you want to piss somebody off, whatever. It's just like, where did these offense, uh, taking offense police come from, man? The whole cancel culture thing mixed in with that and, you know, it's just like so much bullshit to deal with <clears throat> that it's like not even fun to be human anymore. You got to wake up and worry about what's going to happen to you just for having a normal thought. Or having a normal expression or a normal saying or something. It's just, it's ridiculous, you know. But try your hardest, man, to not be one of those people, man. Because, you know, if you are, I don't want nothing to do with you. Because it's hard enough being alive and getting through life as it is without having to worry about something as fundamental as just saying whatever you want. Like, for real. I mean, granted, there are horrible things to say. And you will suffer some consequences if the right or wrong people hear them. But, you know what? Hey, man, just... Chill out on that shit, man. We got enough offended people as it is, man. We don't need to recruit anymore. But, uh, yeah, I do want to motorboat Katy Perry, too, by the way, because she's fine as hell. I like a couple of her songs, you know what I mean? I think Firework is a good song. Uh, I think, what was that? What was my favorite song? Um, uh, what was that one song? Oh, yeah. I forgot what the name of the damn song was. Oh, Dark Horse. That was what it's called. Okay, yeah, that took me a minute to get to that. But I like that song. It was nice. And uh, she obviously kissed a girl and she liked it. So, hey, that was a decent song. <laughs> but, yeah, Katy Perry's fine as hell. I think she actually uh, was, like, saying something um, that had her on stage. Oh, yeah, because she did the halftime show um, at the, uh, the the Seahawks' second Super Bowl. And then she went on stage and said, I just, I'm just here so I won't get fined. She was funny for that. But, uh, yeah, man, there's plenty of things that you want to do in this life, man. But, yeah, man, we'll cross those bridges, hopefully, if we get there. But I'm going to go ahead and cut it off right there. One more time, uh, Brad Williams with Daddy Issues, part two of this stand-up comedy special. And if you like that reaction, please put on the like button for me one more time. Subscribe to the channel, ring that bell, and, of course, as always, leave a nice comment for your boy. Constructive critiques, leave a nice suggestion or request, and uh, throw a couple jabs, jokes, and zingers at me, friendly dialogue, no drama here. All right? You guys get it? I know you guys get it. So, yeah, it's going to be ADB TV, wrapping this one up one more again here, man. Feeling kind of good, you know what I mean? I haven't done this in so long, man. I'm actually happy to get back in the swing of things and all that. Feel good, you know what I mean? Hopefully I don't got to deal with any more tooth issues anytime soon, man. Unless it's a tooth cleaning or something. I got to get one of those done. Yeah. Been a little irresponsible in my life with oral hygiene, man, you know. But for the most part, I've been pretty okay. But, um, yeah, man, no more issues, at least for the time being. There's some other stuff I got to do, you know, hopefully. Because I've never been happy with my smile. But, yeah, I'm just making sure that uh, it doesn't happen anytime soon, man. Because I'm trying to get back to having fun, you know what I mean? And plus... Waiting on word to see if I get hired on by the company I, that I work for. I applied. They asked me to apply because they like my work and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? I feel happy about that. But, uh, yeah, man, we'll see what happens. Waiting on uh, some uh, background check stuff, drug test, all that good stuff. Man, we'll see what happens, though. Um, yeah, I'm sure some of y'all going to have something to say about that. No messed up jokes, man. I know what the deal is here. But, uh, yeah, man, thank y'all for tuning in one more time to this one, man. Had a lot of fun, man. I'm happy to continue on with all the video making and especially stand-up uh, stand special Tuesday, man, because I knew taking all that time off, I was going to get a little bit sidetracked and not remember, you know, where to carry on from and all that. But we back at it again. I had fun. Did you guys have fun? I had a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, man, we're going to continue on with part three uh, next week. And uh, hopefully it's going to be a fun one. Tomorrow we got Women's Wednesday. I don't know quite what I want to pick for that one yet. You know, I'll just probably make it a surprise. You know, do a little toss-up, flip-up a coin type situation. And uh, hopefully it's going to be another funny one. So, yeah, until next reaction, love and appreciate y'all. Peace.